if you have a folder images video or a text file then we can go in and do batch inference with autolytics with a yolo 11 model so this can significantly increase your inference speed if you have multiple images that you can stack together and basically just take all of those and throw it through the model at the same time so usually when we do inference we just take a single image throw it through a model and then we get our results but now we can actually like stack a layer of images so we could for example have four, eight, 16 images, and then we pass all of those through a model at the same time and get the results for all of them as well. So this will actually just load all of them into your RAM or into your GPU and so on, and everything will be there. It will do the four passes and it will be significantly faster. This can also be applied if you have multiple cameras and so on that you want to process at the same time. Just run computer vision models, YOLO 11 as fast as possible. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation and let's see how we can do batch inference, how we can specify the number of batches, and then we'll jump into a Google Cola notebook and do it on a video. First of all here, we go inside our predict. So we have our home tab, we have our predict mode. If you scroll a bit further down, we can see this is how we can run our normal inference. We can specify, we have two here. So if we just take two images, throw it through our model but we can go in and specifically specify the batch size so it's going to use that batch size depending on how many images you have in your folder which can speed up the process this is also good if you have multiple gpus and so on that you want to run your inference on we have videos covering like how to extract the results how to set up all the models here we're just going to use a pre-trained model you can also use your own models directly out of the box you can train them with Autolytics, you can export them, you can use them for inference and so on in here. So we have the whole pipeline and also videos on the channel covering everything. If we scroll a bit further down, we can see we have all the inference arguments. So the main one that we're looking at right now is our batch size. So as default, it's just set to one. So we just take one image, throw it through a model and we get our results. So specifies the batch size for inference. It only works with when the source is a directory of of images a video file could all be a directory of video files streams and so on you can also pass streams into it or a text file or we can just like batch images you can just have one list with numpy arrays and pass that through then you can basically control how you're loading the images loading the different camera streams and so on on your end a larger batch size can provide higher throughput shortening the total amount of time required for inference could also be to just have some video streams you want to process in the background as fast as possible. You don't really care about the outputs and so on. You just want to do some detections and then take a look at the results after. So yeah, this is the main parameter that we're going to specify. We can also specify all the other ones and that is going to apply on all the images that we throw through in our batch inference. So this is pretty much everything that we need. Let's just copy paste this one. We'll throw it into this Google Colab notebook. First of all, we need to pip install it. I'm just going to connect to a GPU here because it's going also going to be significantly faster if you do batch processing on a GPU. In Google Colab, they have free GPU resources and so on available. So I'm just going to connect to that. First of all, we need to pip install Autolytics. The rest is pre-installed inside Google Colab. If you run this on your own computer and so on, make sure that you have Tor, PyTorch, Torch, Torch Vision, and all those. If you just pip install Autolytics, it will take care of most of it. So we're connecting to the runtime. After that, I have a video. So we're basically just going to take this single video here, throw it into it, and then we're going to specify the batch size and compare the inference speed compared to if we just have a batch size of one. If you, for example, have like 16 images or like 32 images, multiple streams and so on, it's going to be even faster. So right now we have connected to runtime. I'm going to drop in the video. We pip install Autolytics. That might just take a few seconds. Let's just go with the YOLO 11 nano model as default. This is where you can swap it out if you want to use your own custom trained models. Instead of predicting on this bus, we're going to predict on our video here. There we go. We want to save it. We specify the imp size. Let's just set the imp size to 640, the confidence 0.3. And here we need to specify our batch as we had inside the documentation. So we just have batch. And let's just start here with, for example, 16. 
And before we even do that, we can probably just try to run the inference without the patch. So I'm just going to copy paste this. There we go. Let's try to just run with a batch size of one. This is the default value, but let's just make it very clear here. We will save the result. We can see all of it inside our run directory after. Right now we're just waiting on the installation to finish up. It might take like 10, 20 seconds in total. There we go. Now we can see that we're creating an instance of our model and we're running our predictions. So right now around 15, maybe a bit further, uh, maybe a bit less, but around 15 milliseconds, maybe 17, 18 on, on average. We can see we have almost 300 frames. So that's more than enough to pass in batches of 16 after. So this is basically just the inference speed that we're looking at. We can see we just have one out of one because we just have a batch size of one. So inference speed here, saw it at the end. This is pretty cool. And this is just the results that we get out at the end from the predictions. So inference 10, we have the pre-process, we have the inference. So let's now go down and try to do the batch processing. If you want to take a look at the results, we can see it over here in our detect run folder, predict, we have our superdry.avi, so this is the output video where you can see all the output results from our inference. So let's just run this while this one here is downloading. So now we're going to pass in batch size of 16. So now it's instead of just running like one each individual one, it's actually like just going to jump, dung, 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 because we use 16 images, 16 images, 16 images. So we already saw that this was significantly faster. If you just take a look at so right now, like depending on how long your video and so on is, but if we take a look at per image up here at the top, also depends on how fast your CPU is, your RAM and all that, because we need to do a transfer back and forth between our GPU and so on. But here we can basically just see the results. If you go up here at the top, so now we can actually see when we look at the pre-processing, it is almost the same because again, we're not doing the inference here or the batch processing for pre-process and post-process, but the inference time itself is down to three milliseconds. Some of them were like 10, 12, four. Uh, the other one where we only had a batch size of one. So this is significantly faster. It's only going to run if you actually have multiple images and so on that you can stack together. So this is pretty cool, like very useful to know if you just want to process videos as fast as possible and you don't really need more images or they're not depending on each other. It could be that you have a tracking system and so on. So it might be harder if you want to like track across your batches. So right now let's just try 32. And now we can see that sometimes we get 2.5 milliseconds inference for each of these individual ones. This is very awesome. Make sure that you use batch processing if that's suitable for your application and project. Hope you learned a ton. Definitely go and check it out. It's just a single argument that we need to specify in the predict method. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy batching.